You know, one of the biggest problems nowadays people are facing all over the world is allergies. Uh, allergies come in many different categories. Some, some reactions are really, really severe, whereas the other, most of the reactions could be mild versions. We call them sensitivities, intolerances. Overall, allergies are the result of an exaggerated immune response to something that used to be harmless to our body before. An antigen comes in and the body reacts to it. In case of allergy, that reaction is exaggerated. So definitely there is a component of immune system in it. So we call it immune system imbalances. When the immune system is out of the balance, its most important job, which is keeping the pathogens away, will be compromised. So in these cases, you will definitely find some sort of microbial activity within the system of the person. There is always high amount of toxicity, whether in the body or outside of the body. For instance, the statistics, statistics prove that by the year 2030, almost 50% of the Europeans will develop allergies, some sort of allergies to perfume, to the chemical that are using commercial perfumes. When allergy response happen, an antigen comes in and the body produces an antibody against it. Anytime there is excessive amount of antibody production in our body, it leads to over-exaggerated immune system in terms of allergies. What triggers excessive amount of antibody production in our body is vaccination. So one of the requirements for vaccines before applying them is to check the balance of, of uh, toxic level in the body, antigen and antibody reactions and a bunch of other stuff. You can't just give vaccines with closed eyes. Uh, sometimes, people consume a lot of food which creates more inflammation in our body. They include processed food, food containing a lot of chemicals, preservatives, additives, food which turn our body into acidic condition. In some cases, there is genetic predisposition. Some people are more susceptible to some sort of illnesses or imbalances than the others. Some of the time, Allergies are the result of def, uh, damages that the medical system causes to body of the people. For example, they give ant antibiotics to, to get rid of some sort of infection after a day or two, suddenly the people react to it as an allergic response. They end up having a lot of eruptions on their, on their skin and so on and so forth. Sometimes there are past traumas. Imagine a subconscious memory is preserved within the system of the, a person. And the moment that substance walks in or anything about that substance, it could trigger that wrong memory. And of course the body will react to it. So it shows as allergies. It's not hidden to anybody that our world today is in a, in a state of crisis when it comes to toxicity. Millions of tons of Obnoxious chemicals, irreversible chemicals are produced by industries and are released within our nature, within the water, within the food, in the, in the uh, air we breathe, and so on and so forth. For example, the American food industry utilizes more than 8,000 chemicals to process food. There should be none, 8,000 chemicals. There are a lot of hormones used in our daily food. Many of the food we consume is actually genetically modified. They are not real food. Genetic modification means when you change the nature of the genome of any species, it can never be the same species as before. Lots of different preservatives as flavor enhancers, thickeners, and stuff like that are used in food industry about 44 different food colorings are used. Some of them are proven to trigger hyperactivity, learning disabilities, allergic reactions, or even more severe problems, such as predisposition to cancer and degenerations, but they're still being used in various forms of food. The sewage dump in our environment is, is way beyond anybody's imaginations. Lots of heavy metals are released in the environment. You know, these uh, 
uh, new form of uh, uh, light bulbs that are coded from inside with mercury. Any, any one of them that is broken, that heavy metal will be released in the environment. A lot of people, when they want to change these light bulbs, they end up breaking them. And immediately at the same time, it causes a lot of, and most of the time, irreversible heavy metal toxicity in them. Think about the plastic waste in our environment. Plastic are found in everything now. And the funny thing is that there is no bacteria, there is no enzyme in the nature to digest plastic. Plastic never existed before human created it. That's why it, there is no solution to dissolve plastic in our environment. A lot of the time, excessive amount of medications and vaccinations could also create allergic reaction to many people, especially the ones who are more sensitive. When allergies happen, people end up having swelling. They, they get a lot of edema in their faces, in their arms, in their hands, fingers, their ring cannot be put back on and so on and so forth. This is big because the, the cells which are creating the body of the blood vessels because of this inflammation, they slightly separate from each other and they open up little gaps through which fluid of the blood, which is water and, and minerals can leak out into the tissue. So a lot of water floods from the blood into the tissue. This is called edema. And then when we talk about inflammation, there has to be three signs for that. Number one, as I mentioned, there is a lot of water in the tissue, so it's swelling. Number two, the tissue looks red because the blood vessels at the surface are highly congested as if the blood cannot move through the vessels properly. And number three, if you touch the area, it feels warm. These are the three signs of inflammation. It happens immediately when an allergic reaction happens. Of course, body ache and fatigue is followed because when the toxic level is raised dramatically, no cell would remain happy in our body. Runny noses, watery eyes, congestions, sneezing, they are regular signs of allergy sensitivity and intolerances. And in severe cases, we have anaphylactic reaction, something that suddenly causes a collapse of the body. This is an emergency in medicine but it doesn't happen very frequently. Maybe it's less than 2% of all the allergies. In case of anaphylactic reactions, like somebody reacts suddenly and very vigorously to let's say peanuts or, or uh, shellfish, stuff like that, it could create sudden death if it is severe. So it's, it's a serious matter. Now, um, there are mental and emotional or functional symptoms related to allergies as well. People go through a lot of mood swings. They get angry quickly or they remain depressed. There is lack of motivation or lack of energy. They constantly feel tired with achy body. Some sort of symptoms similar to chronic fatigue syndrome or fibromyalgia because they all carry components of allergies in them. People cannot fall asleep or stay asleep very easily. In case of children, we see a lot of hyperactivity with them. They lose the ability to learn and focus. So concentration, learning, all will be affected. You can give to sensitive people a candy with sugar from two minutes and on. After you will see the children won't be able to sit and, and behave properly. They, they have to just constantly run and scream and jump and uh, act weird because of the reactions that happens. Some common forms of allergies include hay fever, many different forms of digestive issues from gas, bloating to sometimes severe constipation or diarrhea. Many different forms of skin problems, including eczemas, hives, eruptions, pimples, redness, itching, things like that. In more severe cases, we see asthma attack and sinusitis, which are kind of similar in their pathology. And these people become very susceptible to headache, especially migraine headaches. And of course, different forms of food allergies are there too. 
most of this food uh, or environmental allergies remain undiagnosed because in order to diagnose them in the conventional system of medicine, they have to extract blood or they have to inject a diluted form of this allergen under the skin of the client to check their reaction. There could be millions of items out there with these kind of techniques. They can't check anything more than a few, let's say. With the quantum system that we use, we can definitely check more. Still, a fraction of the total. You could never know the entire re, uh, items which could trigger an allergic reaction in a person. Bloating and indigestion, as I mentioned earlier, are signs of sensitivity and intolerances. Many of these people end up having heartburn, which is kind of uncomfortable feeling at the top of their stomach. They get headache, they get joint pain. They all are a result of increased toxicity because at the time of allergy, lots of toxins are produced inside the body. They get unclear skin because the skin is the largest excreting organ in our body. When tons of toxicity happens suddenly in the body, when kidney, liver, and other detoxification organs fail to clean up the blood as quickly as toxins are produced or imported, the re remaining toxins are pushed towards the skin so that the body can get rid of them through that. And, and many of the time they trigger problems, especially in people who've had issues with their skin in the past. A lot of people suddenly end up having unusual heartbeat, which is called palpitation. And as I mentioned earlier, their mood start to change and, and we see the related or, or the previously mentioned the symptoms in children as well, related to the learning and calmness and right behavior. Now, at the, at the time of allergies, there are three major organs involved in our body at the physical level. There are mental and emotional component in it as well. At the physical level, definitely, as I mentioned earlier, there is an appropriate, some sort of an appropriate immune response. It means microbes now can grow in our body. Microbes could include parasites, bacteria, viruses, fungi. By parasite, I don't necessarily mean worms. They could be single cell microbes, but very sticky, like chewing gum stuck to our dress. We can't get rid of them very easily. During the allergic reaction, there's also a lot of an appropriate digestive functions. Basically something enters the body which cannot be digested. If it cannot be digested, it cannot be absorbed either. So a lot of nutritional deficiencies in long-term will happen. And this kind of behavior could affect the level of uh, glucose in our blood. So most of the time, suddenly they feel as if they are dizzy and their blood sugar starts to drop and they go through some sort of hypoglycemic reaction as well. If something comes to our body and cannot be digested, it is considered as toxin to our body. So a lot of toxicity starts to appear inside our body, first in the blood and then in the fluid that goes out of the blood to surround the cells. And the more toxins, the more damage to the membrane of the cells and the organelles inside the cells. And that will make the, the reaction of the allergies even more complicated in cases. Sometimes we have a little bit of a hive. Sometimes we have severe sinusitis or, or other more difficult issues, including psoriasis. This is basically because the toxins penetrate into deeper level. And this kind of toxicity <clears throat> creates congestion and edema of the mucous membrane. So any skin type structure inside the body, including inside the blood vessels, inside the digestive system, inside the lung and, and its tubes, and everywhere else it starts to, to show signs of inflammation. So they swell up and then they, that will compromise further the circulation. The circulation becomes more difficult than before. And that will add to additional edema everywhere inside the body. So the tissues and the cells become highly irritated. And because of that, the body starts to shift towards acidic situation. When the body is acidic, then a lot of predisposition to difficult diseases start to happen slowly by time. 
So, um, if you look at the pathophysiology, the underlying causes of allergies, we will see a lot of different uh, biochemical reaction that will happen. In conventional system of the medicine, these biochemicals become target by the medication. So your body uh, will not go through the whole inflammatory processes and at some point they stop. But these medications can never rectify the first reason why the body turned into an allergic condition. It just controls the symptoms. <clears throat> they measure some sort of immunoglobulin, which is related to, uh, to quick or latent allergies. They are called immunoglobulin E or IgE and IgG. IgE, when it is measured in the blood, it shows immediate reaction, whereas IgG is a kind of latent reaction. You touch some allergens and then not that day, but Days later, you show allergic reaction to something, and that was the cause. But because it's been a few days after, nobody could understand what really happened. <clears throat> so they come and they, as I said, expose a, a small amount of diluted allergens under the skin through micro injections to check the body reaction to that. This process is limited and is painful and definitely not very appropriate for children. Whereas when we use quantum technology or Vega machines, we calibrate to the vibration of our client. It's like our fingerprint, everybody has a special key which nature has designed for him or her. Your proteins, whatever they are, in your skin, in your hair, inside your body or outside, it has your specific code on it. The quantum technology, the quantum machines or the tools are capable of measuring that vibration. And after knowing the vibration, it as if opens up a communication channel to the target. So it can now sense energy signals, which is information signals, through that communication channel, which is established to the person and subconsciously trigger a reaction by that person. When we talk about subconscious reactions, you should know that in every given second, there is about 40 billion bits of information emitted by our body or absorbed by our body cells tissue. It is analyzed automatically and accordingly the body will react. You don't need to know about that, as if you don't need to know how much thyroid hormone your body needs right now where you are sitting. And the moment you stand up to move, you need another extra amount of uh, the hormones. It, will all, it is all done automatically by your autonomic nervous system and your subconscious brain. Quantum systems get connected to that subconscious part of information. The conscious part, however, is the part that we are aware of it. Now, for example, I'm, I'm focusing on, on doing this lecture, so consciously my attention is here, but my subconscious behavior is still happening without I being uh, worried about, about it. So in comparison, if 40 billion bits of information per second is analyzed by our, by our body, maximum 2,000 of them fit within the conscious mind. The rest of them is subconscious. So quantum machines will send a signal of, let's say, cow's milk, as if you had the milk, you digested it, you absorbed it, and now the energy is burned and is moving inside your body. We can expose you to that final energy of any item, about 11,000 plus, through your subconscious behavior after calibration, your body will react to it. Your body will show us if it is compatible or not, to, and to some degree, without hurting people. So it's all about allowing your body to talk. Your body has the information. Now we have equipments and knowledge to understand that. Although it's not that great in comparison to 40 billion bits of information per second, we can check something a little bit more than 11,000 items. But overall, 11,000 items by itself is good enough to give us an, a good idea about where the source of the problem is. <clears throat> so we actually check the body's energetic reaction. 
there is no needle or any invasive technique here. We can use it on babies, on pregnant women, on infants, and, and it's accurate and it checks what is happening to the body at that moment. Whereas with the conventional system after the needling, they check what it was there. It can never say the truth. Imagine you have sensitivity over an item. One day you feel really good. You are very happy. You, your life is moving on the way that you always wanted it to be and you take that item. Or another time, you are really angry or upset or frightened or highly stressed because of something important and you take that item. Your body will react differently to the same item in these two different occasions because of your overall health and balance. With quantum systems, we can see that. With conventional system, you cannot distinguish that. Another additional uh, privilege of quantum machines in checking allergies is that at the time we check the allergy sensitivity and intolerances, we can immediately send desensitizing energy signals back to the body as if we want to bombard the body with energy of whatever it was showing as allergies for the body to give up. The body will react when the particle of that item enters the body with the energy the body will give up its behavior towards that uh, particular item. So it's kind of desensitizations. None of these um, techniques are 100% guaranteed, but the efficacy of these techniques are way higher than anything anybody could ever imagine. <clears throat> the most uh, allergic items in our daily uh, in, uh, or, or let's say regular environment, including food, they are casein of dairy, which is the protein of cow's milk. And there is the sugar of the milk. This is a secondary issue. So lactose is the sugar of the milk and lactase, which is an enzyme to produce, uh, to help digesting lactose is produced by the tiny, tiny um, cells inside the lumen of our small intestine. But at the time of inflammation, those cells are worn out and they cannot produce the enzymes. As soon as we fix the structure of the gut, the enzyme production goes back towards the normal. But dairy is definitely one of the allergens nowadays. The second one is gluten, which is the protein found in wheat barley and rye <clears throat> mainly in early <clears throat> in early 1960s the british scientists discovered that if they chip off a piece of this gluten protein from wheat which is called an amide group they could create they could make bread out of flour in less than 2 hours previously the bakers had to produce the dough leave it there to rise slowly, which would take about 10 to 14 hours before they could make bread. Now they could do it in two hours. It sounded really good for business, but because of very short amount of the time, the protein inside wheat cannot be uh, accessible to our digestive system very easily. And most of the people nowadays show some sort of intolerance or sensitivity to this gluten. And, and bread used to be our major food, at least in the east side of the world. Now people cannot have it. And they end up having a lot of um, um, stomach gas and they don't know where it comes from. In, in uh, severe reaction to gluten, they end up bleeding with their stool, which is called celiac disease. And ultimately big part of their small intestine and large intestine has to be cut off of their abdomen. So basically, they can never eat anything anymore until they die. This is the conventional treatment. We have other ways to heal that. Other forms of allergens include animal hair or animal dander, especially feathers. Many people use pillow with feathers or they have jackets with feathers or blankets with feathers and they show reaction to them and, and they don't know where it comes from. Nowadays, as I mentioned earlier, because of large amount of chemical use in the food, many of them, including food additives and colors, preservatives could trigger allergic reaction to certain degrees in many people. 
a lot of inhalants such as dust or dust mite, pollen or mold, as well as chemical use in perfume industry are also a big trigger for allergic reaction in people. Sugar is one of the most dangerous uh, components of our food. You have to understand sugar as table sugar never exists in the environment the way that we see it in our containers. The sugar in the cane, it comes or in the fruit, it comes with fibers, with a lot of minerals, with a lot of proteins, with a lot of other components. So it's a full meal. When you have an apple or something sweet as fruits, it is totally different in the body than when you add sugar. You take a tablespoon or teaspoon of sugar. You dump down your immune system up to 50% at the moment. So if there are some microbes in your, in your body which are not very powerful because of the power of your immune system, the moment you start consuming sugar, the immune system loses its power and these microbes become a substantial threat for the body and they can run a course of their, their uh, pathogenic behavior, whatever it is. Some fruits, including banana, strawberries, or some vegetables like nightshades, such as bell peppers or eggplant, they could trigger allergic reaction in a lot of people. We live in a country which is full of dust. It is hot, it is moist. This is a perfect place to grow fungus. And because people consume a lot of sugar in their foods, knowingly un un or unknowingly, most of the people here therefore have problems with fungal overgrowth inside their bodies. I, I talk mainly about the locals who are from here. Chlorine, which is used in swimming pool also is a source of allergic uh, and, and toxic reaction in many kids nowadays. I've seen small little girls around the age four, which are brought to my clinic with vaginal discharge, which is really unusual. Of course, the parents are terrified, but immediately as soon as we recover them by giving them the right probiotics, the problem start, stops. So in order to treat allergies in my perspective, there are a few very important steps that are necessary to be taken. Number one, first, we need to understand at least what are the major allergens that trigger an allergic reaction in a person. And because we use quantum techniques, through our quantum machines, we can easily see them after like about 10, 15 minutes of, of analysis. Then we have to rectify the components of the immune system, which was predisposing the body to initiate allergic reactions. The balance between the Th1 and Th2, it means the amount of antibody that is released in our, in our, inside our blood vessels. We have to understand that. When we control the immune system back to normal, a lot of these microbes that exist in, in the body of the person automatically will disappear. We call them negative factors, microbes, including, as I said, viruses, bacteria, parasites, fungi. Other negative factors include digestive system issues. We need to understand the digestive system in, in, at the time of allergy is out of the balance. Something comes in, the body cannot digest it. Why? This is one question. In many cases, because there is not enough enzymes. So we have to, we have to understand what food should be avoided, what items should be should be avoided and then to rectify the power of the digestive system back to normal. Every piece of the digestive uh, organs has a specific duty and no part can do the other part's job. For example, when people compromise the function of their stomach by drinking a lot of fluid while having heavy meal, the protein which is supposed to be broken in the stomach, it will go out of the stomach without being reached to the final shape it, it was required by being there. The rest of the digestive system will never be able to finish the job of stomach. And it happens to every piece of the digestive system. So it has to be rectified. So we had the component of the immune system. Now we have the component of the digestive system. And we definitely have to get rid of the toxins which are overloading the body. 
Diet and lifestyle modification is really important. Inflammatory processes to control is really important. There are very famous botanical remedies out there which are excellent for that. But unfortunately, in the market of the UAE, we don't have access to good quality herbs or botanical extracts. Nutritional supplements are, are, are recommended by some doctors. But to be honest with you, they work at the very um, uh, small limitation because some, sometimes the root of the cause is very deep down and just using uh, regular nutritional medicine, it's, it cannot be helpful. It's very essential to train the parents in case of children or to teach people about their responsibilities for their own health when they are adults so that they can cooperate with the therapist. We cannot tell them avoid this, avoid that, and they go home and they don't do it and they expect, they expect any sort of improvement. When we get rid of these three components of immune system imbalances, digestive system imbalances, and hypertoxicity of the body at the physical level, and we deal with the mental emotional component of allergies, then it's not difficult to desensitize the body with the quantum systems and the special nutritional supplements that I have been using for the last 19 years. They are designed based on the laws of quantum. When we talk about quantum, we consider not only the physicality of the body, but even more importantly, the information system governing the function and the behavior of the body as well. The supplements I use today are designed to affect the energy system of the body as well. Some doctors recommend some sort of tissue salts which are related to homeopathic therapies. They are also effective. And uh, acupuncture sometimes could help a lot in adults with, with uh, reducing the symptoms of allergies, especially when they are uh, when they are acute. In case of children, we don't use needle on them. We use small little seeds, which are round and very tiny, stuck on a piece of tape. We just stick it to the area of, of the acupuncture points and uh, by, by pressure, pressurizing on them, we stimulate the movement of chi, same as acupuncture, it's very safe. We could use laser beams for the children, or we can use a quantum machine to do acupuncture. And there's absolutely no needle involved. There are other techniques such as emotional freedom, technique EFT, which could immediately change the reaction of the body at the subconscious mind to, to any specific pathogens. There are other uh, alternative techniques such as kinesiology could also help to distinguish the reaction to any particle or to help desensitization. So that was a general briefing of what allergy is. And uh, I have had many, many cases for the last 19 years having some sort of allergies involved. Almost, let's say 99%, let's say 95 to 99% of the people who start therapy with me, with my technique, they have some sort of allergy sensitivity intolerances. This is inevitable. Our world today is different than what it used to be. Food is different. The amount of stress people are experiencing is really huge. The lifestyle of the people, including lack of sleep or lack of appropriate eating habit, they all contribute to predispose people to, to allergies. That's why in the new century, we see more and more and more allergies in every possible way. If you suppress the symptoms, you don't get rid of the, the, uh, the root. With quantum techniques, we look at what is really triggering it at the very, very deep level. The guarantee in my work is that it will not cause additional problem, but there is no guarantee in medicine similar to life. There is no guarantee for any cure for allergies because sometimes even though people get a lot better, but because they are sensitive to dust and they live in the beautiful city of Dubai, which is having has, has a problem with dust in the air, their allergies will never stop the way that uh, we see it in people with no allergies, but it could be easily under control. Now, this brings me to the end of my lecture. If you have any question, you're most welcome to ask. Uh, thank you, Dr. Parviz. Uh, it was very informative. 
was a very informative presentation on allergy. I had a few questions mm. uh, uh, regarding the extreme allergies, like the peanuts and shellfish that you mentioned. Uh, if it's in 2% of the people, that means that lots of people are vulnerable to, I know that I heard people with uh, allergies to the bee sting that can be, uh, you know, fatal as well if it's not yes. treated properly. Yes. Uh, what are people can do when they get exposed to such things? I mean, how much time they have? I know it depends on. Yes, I understand your question. Imagine a person who has severe reaction to bee sting in two different scenarios. Scenario number one, their body is full of toxins, their immune system is out of the balance. So there are a lot of microbes living inside their gut, candida as fungus, parasite, bacteria, of different forms of viruses. And their immune system and, and their digestive system is out of the balance too. If they come and get our treatment, after just about a few months of correcting or rectifying these abnormalities or weaknesses to as much as possible, their body becomes much more cleaner than before. The reaction, the severe reaction happens because the body of the people is completely overwhelmed. If you clean up the mess from inside, the same bee allergy happens, it will never be the same as before, unless they don't take care of their health. If we tell them, okay, don't drink Coke, and they say, okay, if I stop drinking Coke, my life will stop then I can help them with their allergies because there are about 11 spoons of sugar in every can of Coke. It's okay to drink it once in a while. It's not okay to have it as a habit. Some people have wrong habits. That's why I mentioned earlier that cooperation between patient and doctor is really important. The outcome will be outstanding. I've helped many people with severe allergies. In, in many cases, I can never stop the reaction to bee sting in that case, for example, although it gets so much better, but if they follow the information and they keep their body clean and better balanced, it's guaranteed they can never have the same intensity in terms of the reactions as they used to have in the past. So it works on everybody. That one is guaranteed. How much it works? It depends on number one, the, the amount of cooperation of the patient and sense of responsibility of the patient to his or her own health. Number two is uh, how, they, how they take care of their immediate environment. If they are careful and they care about their health, you have to say goodbye to those severe allergies forever. Okay, my other question is regarding some allergies that I have, I mean, I know gluten is something that bothers me, so that I can avoid it. But dust bothers me, but I cannot avoid it. Is there things that I can do about dust? When I, I did a checkup on you, I remember. Did I mention anything about gluten to you? Yes. Okay, then. So, and I, and I gave up, and I prepared a nutritional deficiency protocol for you as well, right? Correct. That's it. What I did was that I... According to the protocols that we have in those prescriptions, we take care of the immune system imbalances, we take care of the digestive system imbalances, and we take care of detoxification. And because this is a quantum technology uh, on medicine, when you take the medicine, it changes your perception at the subconscious level to a lot of other things slowly at a time. So I highly recommend you to take your nutritional supplements that I recommended, and then we follow up with that to see how we can change your allergic reactions to, to previously difficult items. And last question for me is, how do you test quantum on kids, quantum medicine? How I'm do you sorry, you, I couldn't hear you. One more time, How please. do you perform the quantum test on kids? On how do we quantum perform quantum kids? tests on kids? If they are, the, the quantum machine should be connected to, to, to people through four straps around their uh, arm wrists and ankle joints, similar to an electrocardiogram machine. 
and there is a band that is uh, wrapped around their forehead. If they are younger children and you cannot strip them to the machine through the wires, we just put the one that we use around the head of the of older client around their tummy. In case of babies, we just leave it over the dress on their stomach, on their tummy, I mean. It's good enough to pick up information. Your, the quantum signals of any entity exists everywhere in the universe. This is a different form of energy, and this is a fundamental form of energy. I'll give you an example. Imagine I am sitting here and my mother is in another country. If I want to pray for my mother from my heart, which I know that it affects, I don't need to have her by me right here. I need to hold, hold on to her hand. I just need to concentrate on her. I, I tap into her energy and I send signals to her. Like sometimes you think about a friend a couple of times and suddenly you receive a call from him or her. And it's surprising. This is a law in quantum physics. It's called quantum entanglement. In some cases, I can actually connect to people without using strips. That's why I have a lot of distance healing therapies that I do on various patients. I have patients from England, South Africa, Russia, Japan, you name it. They send me a message, Singapore recently, they send me a message, I, I assign a time, and because I know their frequency system, I get connected to them, and the amount of information I get is pretty uh, close, and most of the time is surprising. But this requires a bit of a knowledge for people to know that how the quantum machines work. Regularly at the office, I always use the strips. As I said, for adults, there are four plus one. In children, just, just one, we leave it very gently on their body or close to them. It's good enough. It will pick up the signal and I see it there. That's why it's very safe and, and absolutely non-invasive. 